Our first scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for our ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast, boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, though whom we have, through whom we have now received reconciliation. And if you are able, oh, and haven't already, please rise for the reading of the gospel. While a large crowd, this is from Luke 8, chapter, or verses 4 through 15. While a large crowd was gathering, and people were coming to Jesus from town after town, he told this parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed, and he was, as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Only other seed fell among thorns, which grew up with it and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. His disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to others I speak in parables, so that through seeing they may not see, through hearing they may not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those along the path are the ones who hear, and the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who receive the word and joy when they hear it, but they have no root. They believe for a while, but in the time of testing, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns stand for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with noble and good heart who hear the word and retain it, and by persevering, produce a crop. May God bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of his word. Amen. He may be seated. A message about, uh, about witnessing, about sharing a story and uh, sharing the gospel story about planting seeds and what that, uh, what that looks like. Uh, kind of reminds me of a story. You see, there was a, there was a pastor, uh, not unlike me. Uh, there was a pastor that loved to golf, just absolutely loved to golf. And he woke up on a morning kind of like this. It was beautiful outside and went, man, wouldn't that be good to be out there to be out on the course and, and play around a golf. But oh my gosh, it's Sunday. What do I do? 
I know what I'll do. I'll call the associate pastor and let him know that I won't be able to be there today. I wasn't really feeling that well, so the associate pastor is going to have to take Sunday. So then he decides, I'm going to drive, but I need to make sure that I like drive to Rockford or to Janesville, and i got to play around there. That way nobody will know me. So he drives and drives, gets out on the course, and while this is happening, you can kind of see this thing playing out in heaven, and Jesus is leaning over to his father saying, hey, do you see this? Do you see what's happening here? And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I do. He says, you going to let this happen? He says, just hang on. So he gets out there and starts playing that first hole, 350 yards, dog leg to the right, the pin is way in the back of the green for all of you golfers out there. He lines up that shot, hits it 350 yards, bounces in front of the green, rolls up the green all the way across the green and in the hole. Jesus leans over and says, Dad, what'd you do that for? You realize what happened? He goes, yeah. Who's he going to tell? All about witnessing now he can't tell anybody but you see God wants us to witness to share the stories he wants us to share his love and so kind of what we've been doing through confirmation is just that is about learning about God's love and so that we can then in turn share it with others so that we know. Now, I've asked, uh, I've asked our confirmation students to, uh, to prepare a couple of things to share with you, but before we get to that, I wanted to kind of let you know, you know, here's kind of my background on confirmation, because confirmation, uh, confirmation is a completion of something. It is, it is not a growing from, really weird thing going on. It's not just, I'm going to go back to this one. Uh, so if you want to pull this one back up again, it's just all the frequencies. I don't know what's going on. Uh, so it's not a graduation from church. It is not. Although there have been some in my past that I remember that kind of treated it that way. Uh, it's an invitation. Because you see, at confirmation, what we're doing is we are actually confirming our baptismal vows. Just a couple of weeks ago, we had a baptism here at Journey of Hope, and baptism, the, a number of all of you that were here that day, we recited a response, and that, was, that response was for us to take part in the baptism, to promise to help raise a child within a community of faith. So for the two that we have this morning, we have J.J. Lindstrom and, and Simran Singh, you have done that. You have helped them grow up in the church. You have helped guide them through Sunday school, through other events, through worship services. You have fulfilled your baptismal vows to them. They have fulfilled the vows that were said for them. And so now at confirmation, they actually get a chance to speak for themselves to say that, yes, this is what I believe. And yes, I take those vows seriously. Because at the end of these questions that I will ask them, they actually join Hope, United Methodist Church, as a full member of the church. This is what it means to be confirmed, to go through this journey and to confirm your baptismal vows. And so as we do this, as we share, I'm going to invite uh, JJ and Simran, whichever one wants to come up first. I'll say, oh, oh Simran. <laughs> he was quick. He wasn't this quick during our classes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to invite you to stand up at the pulpit so that you've got a microphone up there uh, and so they can share with you. Uh, a little bit of what we what we talked about they believe good morning as I was growing up 
I remember the church as being a place where everyone was very welcoming and nice. When I was younger, there wasn't many other kids here. That makes Sunday school a little difficult. So I don't have that much memory of it, but I definitely remember Miss Mary and Paul who helped shape my beliefs in Jesus and his teachings. I believe that God is good and is all around us. I also believe that we may never fully understand who or what God is, but we will always know that we are forgiven and loved by God. Some things I like to do at church is go to the events we have, like the game nights and other things that we do. <laughs> I also love running the cameras during church on Sundays. I love the church because of all the things we do for the community. For example, we go to Spirit Lake in North Dakota where we bring shoeboxes and do a mission trip most summers. Some of the things we have done on the summer trips are painting, wheelchair ramps, fixing roofs, and even building shelves for the food pantry. Doing all of those things to help people is a good feeling, and I like how the church is always doing things like that. One thing I believe that all churches could improve at is bringing in the younger generation. I say this because I can't name very many people I know at school who are religious or go to church at all. I think that reaching out to more schools would be helpful to bring in the younger generation. If we reach out for them to come to more events, maybe we could encourage them to come to a Sunday service. If they don't like it, they don't have to come again. <laughs> But if they do, then our congregation will grow and have more younger people included. Once I am officially a member of Journey of Hope, which is after this service, I see myself becoming more involved in attempting to make this idea, bringing in the younger generation, a reality. Thank you. <laughs> Now we'll invite Simran to come up and share with all of us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, to me, church means to worship and learn new things that you didn't know before. Many people have been with me through this journey. Jesus has been with me through my entire journey of confirmation. He has been by my side since I started to go to church as a baby. Even my mom forced me into the kids' choir with my brothers. Um, my mom helped me numerous times with understanding certain scriptures, what, what certain scriptures meant, and different stories. She taught me the Lord's Prayer at four years old, and it stuck with me since then. Um, my brother has told me a lot about his knowledge of church, and it changed my perspective a lot. Um, he told me that Jesus really mean, what Jesus really means to him and helped what, how he helped him specifically and um, what Jesus really does for us. Um, Pastor Jared has also helped me understand different topics of church and how Jesus the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and also helped me believe that he can be with, spiritually within us. He taught me that God will always forgive us for our sins. Um, I think church is a place where you can find people who are somewhat similar to you and can talk with. I like how everything runs in general here in Journey of Hope. In Journey of Hope, I like the people that go there because everybody is like really nice and it makes me feel welcomed. Um, and I just like um, the way everything runs. Thank you. <laughs> 